Okay, we're going to start talking in section 7.4 on inequalities and sets. We're not really going to cover the set part. Okay, I'll just kind of real quickly give you the 30 second set uh, explanation. You know, when we're talking about a set of numbers, usually they put them in these curly Q braces. Okay, and there's some numbers in there. That's a set of numbers. Okay, now, in this particular example, the set of integers between negative 2 and positive 5. Integers are just the nice pretty whole numbers, including 0 and including the negative whole numbers. So if you look at negative 2 and 5 and you say, what's in between those numbers? Well, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, you put them in a curly cube brace. Okay, there's a little more formal way to present any set of numbers. And again, this is kind of mathematical mumble jumbo here, curly cube brace, we would read that as the set of all x. That vertical line means such that x is an element of something. Now q has a meaning, and I, I didn't show what it is, but q in this case is talking about rational numbers. I don't even think you can see that, but again, not important for you. I'm just giving you the quickie, quickie version. q, the set of all x such that x is an element of the rational numbers and x is greater than 5. Okay, that's how you would identify. That's a whole set of numbers, right? All numbers that are part of the rational numbers that are greater than 5. That's a lot of numbers. Okay, and that's one way to set it, say it. Okay, empty set. I've alluded to that before. You can show it as a curly cube brace with nothing in it or a zero with a slash to it. Okay? Alright. I want to talk more about inequality, so. An inequality represents a set of numbers, which is kind of why we, we, we talk about sets in this same section. An inequality, and we've seen it before, right? Not an equal sign, but a less than, or, an, or a greater than, or a less than or equal, or greater than or equal. Okay? And, and we need to show a range of numbers when we're talking about inequalities. Okay, and if you look up here, I think if I turn my light off, it's actually better. Maybe. When we report, when we use these inequality symbols, you know, strictly less than or strictly greater than, that means that whatever number I'm talking about is not included. If I say x is less than 5, that means 5 is not included, right? It's less than 5. Everything all the way up to 5, but not 5 itself. If I say x is less than or equal to 5, well, then now 5 is included. Okay, and there's a different way to represent those two statements, whether or not that number on the end is included or not. Okay, and we'll talk about that. All right, let me turn my light back on now. Okay, so I want to talk about example four here. Example four says, let's represent the sets of numbers on a number line and using what's called interval notation. Now, number five is written, part A is written like this. So example five on page 351, part A. Okay, now we've seen this before, kind of a double inequality, x is sandwiched in the middle. You need to read this from x's perspective. If it was just written like that, we would say x is less than 8. Okay, this is a little awkward to write it this way. We, we would more, f if you have to read it backwards, always read it from x's perspective. So that means x is greater than 1. Usually we call that the less than symbol. Because usually I would say it this way, x is greater than 1. If I was just saying x is greater than 1, that's how I would write it. Well, I'm saying 1 is less than x is, is another way to read that, right? Now I've, I've turned it around now. Or I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm just reading it backwards. 1 is less than x, so read it backwards. That means x is greater than 1. Okay, so always read it from x's perspective. x is greater than 1, and at the same time, x is less than 8. Okay, so there's a range of numbers that falls into that category, right? On a number line, you know, let's put 0 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x is greater than 1. That means 1 itself is not part of my set of numbers here, right? Because it's strictly greater than 1. And it's strictly less than 8, so that means 8 is also not part of my set. So I'm going to look at all numbers 
between 1 and 8, not including 1 and 8. So we show that by putting a parentheses on the 1 and a parentheses on the 8. And then we shade in the space in between. Okay? That's how one way to show x is greater than 1 and less than 8. Okay, another way to show it is what's called interval notation. Okay, interval notation says I'm going to list a set of numbers, not including 1, but starting at 1, going up to 8, not including 8, so I put a parenthesis after the 8 also. Okay, that's how we would show that, that inequality, that range of numbers. Okay, and, and the curly cube braces and things we talked about a minute ago, you're not going to be responsible for that, but we do need to know this kind of interval notation and a number line notation. Okay, because we're going to report some inequalities that way. Let's look at part B. Okay, now, very similar, except now it's less than or equals to. And, uh, from, from x's perspective, x is greater than or equal to 1, and at the same time, less than or equal to 8. So I'm still going to have that same basic number line. Okay, I'm still talking between 1 and 8, but this time I have the equal part. So that means 1 and 8 are now included in my solution set. And the way we distinguish that is by a square bracket. Remember I said during order of operations, sometimes we had like a, an outer bracket and an inner parentheses, and I said there's no difference between a bracket and parentheses in that context. But I said there is a time when there is a difference. And here's that time. Okay, so now 1 and 8 are included, and then everything in between is included. So I'm going to shade all that stuff, including the 1 and the 8. So we show the inclusion by the square parenthesis, the square bracket. Okay? Interval notation, 1, 8 in square brackets. Okay? That's how we're going to show these. How about C? X is less than 3. That's it. No X sandwiched in the middle of two things. Now X is just every single number I can dream of less than 3. Not including 3. Strictly less than. Alright, so what is that going to mean? Well, not including 3 means put a parenthesis on, oops, put a parenthesis on 3. And less than means I'm going to the left here, so I'm going to shade the entire number line to the left. Okay. Now, how far does that number line go? Well, it goes back to what we call negative infinity. Infinity is represented as a figure eight on its side, so a negative infinity would be there. So an interval notation. The infinity always gets a parenthesis, okay? Because infinity is not a hard break. You know, a square bracket means a hard break. Stop here. Well, there is no stop here with an infinity. Infinity goes forever. Okay, so the infinities always get a parenthesis. In this case, it's negative infinity all the way up to negative to positive 3. Not including positive 3, so 3 also gets a parenthesis. Okay, all good there. Part D x is greater than or equal to 3. Greater than or equal. Okay? Well, greater than means I'm getting big to the right. And it's also the or equal part, so I'm going to put a square bracket on 3. A square bracket. And I'm going to shade to the right now, everything to the right. And this goes to what's called positive infinity. Okay. In interval notation, 3 with a square bracket up to positive infinity, and the infinities always get a parenthesis. Okay. All right. Sweet. That's part B. Part E of example 4 says all real numbers. Part E. I'm, I'm going to sneak it in here just to start fresh with the next page. All real numbers. Well, what does that mean? What's all real numbers on a number line? That's this entire number line. 
Well, 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 where does the number line go? Well, it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Zero is in the middle there, but I'm talking about every single number on that line, so I would call that parentheses, negative infinity, positive infinity, and close my parentheses, okay? Infinities always get a parentheses. All right? All right, so that's, that's the gist of inequalities, okay? It's a range of numbers we're going to now be talking about. And we need to express that range either on the number line or in something called interval notation. There is another notation that's that set builder notation with the curly cube races and the set of all x such that, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're not going to worry about that one, okay? But the number line and the interval notation is something good to know. All right, so that's 7.4. Uh, that's really all we need to take away from 7.4. 7.5 now is going to start solving inequalities. It's going to look just like an equation, and for almost all practical purposes, we're going to solve it just like an equation, except we're going to report our answer a little differently. And then there's one situation that we need to watch out for where we have to do something a little extra, a little different. And when we get to that, I'll mention it. I'm fumbling around trying to find another marker here. Pardon me. And we'll see how a pen works, I guess. Moving forward, and then I'll regroup on the next video here. I'm without markers. Okay. So let's dive in now to 7.5. Uh, yeah, let me just write and see how it looks. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Section 7.5. This is page uh, 353. Okay. We're going to start solving what we call linear inequalities. Almost identical to an equation. In fact, example one first, first gives us an equation to deal with. 4x plus 6 equals 2x minus 2. Okay, that's not an inequality. That's an equation. We know how to solve that. Put the x's on one side. I'll always prefer the left, not knowing any better. 2x plus 6 equals negative 2, subtract, okay, hopefully this is real easy now, right? I know we've just done it a few videos ago, but hopefully you've, you've done a lot of work and solving equations is now easy for you. And I get x equals negative 4, okay, equation, fine. Well, what if it's not an equal sign? Everything else being the same in this problem, except it's not an equal sign this time. I want to say 4x plus 6 is greater than 2x minus 2. Okay? Just not an equal sign. You'll see, with this problem, there's going to be really no changes at all except how I'm going to show the answer. Okay? Instead of an equal sign, I've got that greater than sign. I do all the same mechanics of solving here. Okay? And I get x is greater than negative 4. All right? This is a unique answer with an equation. There's only one answer. Negative 4. That's it. Well, over here, there's an infinite number of answers. Okay? All numbers that are greater than negative 4. Okay? How would I show that? Well, in a number line, you know, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. If that's negative 4... I'm going to show all numbers greater than negative 4, but not equal to negative 4, right? So it gets a parentheses, and it gets a shade in the greater than direction, right? Which is that way, greater than, big numbers. In interval notation, I would say all numbers starting at negative 4, but not including negative 4, so parentheses, all the way up to infinity. Okay, that's how I would report the answer. That's really the, there's one other difference we're going to have to worry about here in a moment, but other than that, that's it. It's exactly the same as solving an equation, except we're going to report our answer a little differently. Okay? Let's check out another one. Let's look at example 2 on the next page. Example 2. Example 2 says... Again, it's working a parallel, it's working an equation, and an inequality. So let's go ahead and we'll do that as well. We have 3x plus 5 equals 7x plus 13. Um, what this, what 
the book does now is it's putting the X's on the right. And there's kind of a good reason for that, and, I, and I'll show you in a second. So let me go ahead and put the X's on the right. So I'm going to get 5 equals 4x plus 13, subtract the 13, subtract the 13, and then i got to figure out 5 minus 13, so negative 8 equals 4x, divide by 4, I get x equals negative 2. Okay, that's the equation. Okay, so I'm going to work the inequality the same way. So 3x plus 5. Uh, in this case, we have less than 7x plus 13. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I put the x's on the right. Again, there's, there's a reason why I'm doing this. Normally, I'll put them on the left. So I've got 5 is less than 4x plus 13. Subtract the 13. Subtract the 13. Negative 8 is less than 4x. Divide, divide. Negative 2 is less than x which is another way of saying x is greater than negative 2. Would you all agree with that? I have to read it backwards. This is saying negative 2 is less than x. If you read it backward, x is greater than negative 2. So I want to report it with x on the left, because then I can think up and down the number line a lot better. It would be hard for me to do the number line this way. I mean, i got to think about it. It's greater than negative 2. So got to go down here to negative 2, not equal to negative 2, strictly greater than. Put a parenthesis on the negative 2, but greater than means I'm going to the right. So I'm going to shade it in that way. Okay, in interval notation, I'm going to start down here at negative 2, not including negative 2, all the way up to positive infinity because it's a greater than problem. Okay? All good there? All right, now typically, typically, I'm just going to always leave the x on the left and not on the right like we just did with that example. Okay, so I'm going to do the same example again. 3x plus 5 is less than 7x plus 13. I want the x's to be on the left. That's what I'm always going to do because it's easier to read. So we get negative 4x plus 5 is less than 13. Subtract the 5. Negative 4x is less than... 8. And here's the kicker with inequalities. If we divide by a negative number right here in this last step, or if for some reason I multiplied through by a negative number, only if it's negative, so now I'm dividing by a negative number, I have to change my inequality around. So now it's not going to be x is less than anymore. i got to do the old switcheroo and make it greater than. Okay? Greater than what? 8 divided by negative 4 and negative 2. And you see, that's the answer we got up here. x is greater than negative 2. x is greater than negative 2. So when we divide through by a negative, or if we, for some reason, we're multiplying through by a negative, we have to switch the sign around. Okay, that's the big catch with inequalities. Okay, you might have to switch the inequality symbol around. And you do that only if you're multiplying through or dividing through by a negative like we just did. Okay, then we would report the answer the same way as we did right there. Okay, so let's keep the x on the left because you don't really know which way is going to give you that negative in front of x. The reason the author worked this one kind of backwards with the x's on the right is so you would have a nice positive 4x and you're dividing by positive 4. You see, we had to divide by negative 4, but it's just kind of dumb luck that it worked out that way. Sometimes when you put the x on the left, you'll get the negative. Sometimes you won't. Okay, so be consistent. Put the x's on the left. You might have to flip the inequality symbol. Maybe not. Okay? Okay. That's really all there is to it. Otherwise, the mechanics of solving are the same. Uh, I'm debating here on this video... Yeah, this video might be a tad longer than the others, but why not? Let's knock out this section. You love these videos, right? I know you're sick of them. I don't blame you. All right, let's look at example three. 4x minus 2 is less than or equal to 3 parentheses, 25 minus x. All we're doing is tricking it up now with a little bit of simplification, order of operations business. That's all we're doing. Okay? 
distribute. So I'll leave this nonsense alone on the left. Distribute my 3, and I'm going to get a 75 minus 3x. Okay? Put your x's on the right. Just be consistent. Put them on the right. You see, this time that gave me a positive 7. So I'm not going to have to do the old switcheroo because I got a positive 7 there. Okay? It's, it's luck of the draw. Sometimes you'll get a negative, sometimes a positive. Okay, 7x is less than or equal to 77 in this case. Divide by 7, divide by 7. I do not flip the sign because I'm not dividing by a negative. x is less than or equal to an 11. How do I show that? Well, on a number line, you know, 0, here's 11, right? Less than 11, but also or equal. So it gets a nice square bracket at 11. And it gets a less than shade all the way back to negative infinity. So an interval notation, it's from negative infinity up to, uh, excuse me, not 7, up to 11, and 11 gets a square bracket because it's included. All right, that's all there is to it. Very, very, very similar to equations. Example 4, 2x minus 3 parentheses x plus 2 Close parentheses, greater than, ah, sorry, strictly greater than, not the or equal, strictly greater than, 5x minus parentheses, x minus 5. Okay, we've got lots of little things in here that we've done. Let's just be careful. I need to distribute a negative 3 across, right? So it becomes negative 3x minus 6 is greater than 5x, and I'm distributing a negative 1 across, so it becomes minus x and then plus 5, okay? So here I'm going to get a negative 1x minus 6 is greater than a 4x plus 5. I will be consistent and put my x's on the left. And you see that gives me a negative 5x, so there's my indicator. I'm going to have to flip the sign around, do the old switcheroo, okay? Add 6 to both sides. Negative 5x is greater than... 11, divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, I divide it by a negative, I'm doing the old switcheroo on the sign here. So now it's a less than negative 11 fifths, okay? It's a decimal or a fraction or a decimal, but you know, that's life, oh well. well what is negative 11 fifths on a number line? Well, you know, it's negative 2 and a fifth, a little bit more than negative 2, right? So a little bit more than negative 2 is right there somewhere. All right, we're going to put a parentheses because it's not included. It's strictly less than. I'm going to shade everything to the left all the way back to negative infinity. So in interval notation, how do I represent all numbers less than negative 11 fifths? Well, that would be from negative infinity all the way up to negative 11 fifths, but not including negative 11 fifths, so I give it a parentheses. Okay, there we go. Sweet. Okay, that's example four. There's one more example in this section. That's why I wanted to sneak it on the same video, and then we'll move on to something new in our next one. Uh, this one's an application here. Okay, let me pull the book over. An electrically controlled thermostat is set so that the heating unit automatically comes on and continues to run when the temperature is equal to or below 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 72 degrees Fahrenheit. At what Celsius temperature to the nearest hundredths of a degree Celsius will the heating unit come on? One formula relating Celsius to Fahrenheit is blah, blah, blah. Using the formula blah, 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 the heating unit will operate when the expression 9 fifths C plus 32 is less than or equal to 72. All right, so we're given, it's setting it up for us. 9 fifths C uh, plus 32 is less than or equal to 72, okay? And we need to solve this bad boy. Solve for C. Subtract 32 from both sides. 9 fifths C is less than or equal to, make that subtraction, we're going to get a 40. Remember when I had a fractional coefficient, the best way to get out of that is just multiply by the reciprocal. So times 5 ninths on both sides. 
times 5 ninths. Okay, if it makes me feel better, I'll put a denominator of 1, so it looks like a fraction times a fraction. This becomes a 45 divided by 45, right? Or it all cancels away to a nice pretty 1C, or just C, is less than or equal to. Okay, here I can actually do the multiplication, or maybe I can spot some canceling opportunities or what have you. I don't really see any good canceling opportunities, right? Because there's no 3 hidden inside my 40. So let's just go ahead and multiply and then divide. So we're going to take, uh, yeah, let me show it. We're going to take 40 times 5 and then divided by 9. And we're going to get 22 with a repeating 2, right? 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, repeating. And I believe we were asked to round it off. What were we asked to do? To the nearest hundredth, okay? Tenths position, hundredths position. So that's the two I'm rounding to, and I'm looking there to make my decision. So, of course, C is less than or equal to 22.22 degrees Celsius. How do I show that? Well, in interval notation, it's a less than, which means negative infinity all the way up to... 22.22, uh, uh, including, less than or equal, including that number. So I'll put a bracket around it, okay? Now, we're talking a practical application here, right? I mean, this is the mathematical way to show all numbers less than or equal to 22.22. Of course, in, the, in a real situation, you know, how low is the temperature really going to get? Nowhere close to negative infinity, of course. But, again, we're presenting a mathematical solution here on all numbers less than or equal to 22.22. And that's how we do it. Okay, that's it for this section. We will move on to 7.6 in the next video.